Hi everyone, welcome to this talk by Oxford University Press on the new IB Diploma Mathematics courses. This talk is actually going to be about the toolkit. What is the mathematical toolkit in the new courses? Now, before I get started, I always like to start off with a quote, and this is the quote that really resonates with me by Roald Dahl. I began to realize how important it was to be an enthusiast in life. If you are interested in something, no matter what it is, go at it full speed ahead. Embrace it with both arms, hug it, love it, and above all, become passionate about it because lukewarm is no good. And I think it's so important as teachers that we try to foster and develop that passion uh, for learning and hopefully bring joy to the mathematics classroom as well. Okay, so let's have a look at the new mathematics diploma program uh, courses. They've first of all released the nature of the IB mathematics courses. And I think that this is a very interesting visual that encapsulates all the very important ideas of the new mathematics courses. So you can see at the center, there's the mathematics and we have the five topics that surround uh, the mathematics. So they're number and algebra, the calculus, statistics and probability, geometry and trigonometry, and functions as well. And then from the, that circle, we move out and we actually look at 12 concepts that can serve as wonderful lenses, conceptual lenses, as you are designing your units of study. And then you can see the outer ring really still includes those very important components of any diploma program, which is to do with the theory of knowledge, the creativity activity service, uh, the approaches to teaching and learning, and also international mindedness. Okay, so we're going to start off with a little game about the mathematical toolkit and just see what our understanding is. I'm going to show you three statements, and one statement is actually true about the mathematical toolkit. So I'd like you to think about these three statements and then choose one that you think is true. The other two are actually false. So statement number one. The toolkit is not part of the teaching hours. Statement number two, the toolkit is to develop approaches to teaching and learning. Statement number three, the toolkit is to be mainly used for the personal exploration. So think about which of these three is true and which two are false. So hopefully you chose the second uh, statement, which is the toolkit is to develop approaches to teaching and learning. Uh, the toolkit is part of the teaching hours. So that first statement is false. And the last statement, the toolkit is to be mainly used for the personal exploration. Yes, you'll, you can use some of the hours to develop the personal exploration, but that is not the main purpose of the actual toolkit. Okay, when I, in my travels, this is probably the most uh, heard complaint that I hear from maths educators around the world. I don't have enough time. And so time now has been allocated to really try to undertake those types of activities that you want your students to undertake like a mathematician. And you really want to try and develop different skills with your students to enhance learning. So this toolkit, really the main purpose is to give teachers more time so that you are also giving students a mathematical toolkit, which will allow them to be able to problem solve and to be able to reason and to be able to hopefully ultimately enjoy learning mathematics in the classroom. So looking at the full structure, what does the toolkit look like in terms of the content of the courses? Well, we have the two pathways, analysis and approaches, and we have the applications and interpretation. And you can see that these are the number of hours for each of the five topics. And what you notice is this huge band of 30 hours that is devoted for investigative, problem solving and modeling skills development. Now, some of those 30 hours will be devoted to the personal exploration, but really we want those 30 hours to really be used for the approaches to teaching. Now, what are these approaches to teaching from the IB? We call them the ATLs and they are six pedagogical principles 
uh, that they would, that are encouraged in all learning, in all discipline areas, across all IB programs. And the six pedagogical principles include an inquiry-based approach, mathematics that's in local and global contexts. It also includes differentiated learning uh, that caters to all of your learners in your classroom. Uh, there is also a focus on conceptual understanding of mathematical concepts. Uh, the other pedagogical principle is really about promoting teamwork and collaboration, which is a very important 21st century skill. And of course, teaching and learning must be informed by this formative and also summative assessment. So those approaches to learn, those approaches to teaching pedagogical principles are really important and, and really the 30 hour toolkit allows teachers and students to have the space to be able to address these pedagogical principles. Now the IB have released this wonderful document called the Teacher Support Material and there is a lot of guidance to help teachers with the approaches to teaching and learning. So what is included in this mathematical toolkit? We've got cognitive activators, we have conceptual understandings, using technology, mathematical modelling and also proof. So I'm going to talk about each of these uh, supporting classroom activities that will really help teachers to um, adopt the approaches to teaching uh, uh, pedagogical principles. So we're going to start with the cognitive activator. What is a cognitive activator? Well, the purpose really is to prepare students to start learning, to actually engage and learn the content. And they serve to actually introduce any new topic or concept. And from that point, then students are able to take that uh, introduction and that activator and be able to learn further and deeper uh, within the topic. Let me show you some examples of what a cognitive activator actually is. So we take lots of examples from the Harvard Visible Thinking Project, uh, from Project Zero. And uh, these really do align with the approaches to learning skills from the IB as well. So here are some examples. One is connecting to previous learning on the topic or different topics within the same concept. Another example of a cognitive activator would be starting with an essential question, something that's quite provocative and that can be understood by students. Uh, but only can be answered by learning new material and new content. And another example is really to ask students to reflect or extend in terms of their understanding. We really value the importance of metacognition with our students and we know that research actually says that student achievement goes up when we give our students opportunities to metacognitively reflect and think. So after saying that, this means I need to give you an opportunity to really reflect now on what we've discussed so far. So we're going to engage in a visible thinking routine. It's called Connect Extend Challenge. So what I'd like you to do on your post-it notes is to actually uh, answer and think about how you feel what, in terms of what we've discussed so far. So how are the ideas connected to what you already knew? What new ideas did you receive from this talk that it's extended or pushed your thinking? And then what is actually still challenging you or confusing you? And I'll give you a couple of minutes to do this. Okay, so the IB in terms of the conceptual understandings have released 12 big concepts that I think serve as wonderful conceptual lenses and really help focus different units of mathematics. Um, they, the IB have also introduced alongside these DP concepts statements of conceptual understanding. So when you actually look at the guide, you will see at the beginning of every topic, essential understandings. And I have an example here from functions, the analysis and approaches course. So every topic in the guide begins with the statement of an essential understanding. But in addition to this, there are actually also suggested content specific statements of understanding. So here, this is still from the functions guide on uh, the, application, the analysis and approaches. So here are two examples of 
content-specific statements of conceptual understanding. Now, the IB really do encourage teachers to develop their own statements of conceptual understanding, and I want to stress the importance of not sharing these with students. So these statements of conceptual understanding drive learning in the classroom and help teachers to plan the learning engagements and experiences, but they are not to be written on the board as an objective at the beginning of a lesson. Basically, I love to use the analogy, imagine if like I gave you a present and then I told you what that present was before you opened it. Or before you watched a movie, I told you the spoiler to the movie instead of the trailer. So it's very important that we allow our students to uncover those very deep conceptual understandings through an inquiry-based learning experience. And these statements really are the essence of what we want students to take away from that learning experience. So I'm going to remind everyone, please do not share these statements of conceptual understanding with your students. Okay, so what else is in this toolkit? We all, we, there's a big emphasis on technology and that's really important. So I have just a few examples of technology that could be used. And in the teacher support material, there are actually lots of suggestions on how we can use these different uh, techno technological tools. So you can see there's GeoGebra, there's Desmos, there's different spreadsheets. Uh, Wolfram Alpha, and then of course we have the GDC, the Graphical Display Calculator, that students are able to actually take into external examinations. Okay, let's move on to the mathematical modeling uh, flowchart, which I think is a very important process for students to really understand when they're mathematically modeling. So we want to teach students explicitly this flowchart, that, that they start off with a real life problem, they develop a model, and then once they test that model, they decide whether to accept or reject that model. If they accept the model, then they move on, they reflect on and apply the model and then extend it. But if they reject it, then it's important that they go back and they're able to actually redevelop another model. So this is something that is included in the 30 hour toolkit to help students understand the mathematical modeling process. Okay, and I think we've up to proof now. And the main, I think, purpose of proof is to really develop these different skills that I've listed here. Group work, collaboration, teamwork are so important. Reasoning, really, reasoning skills come and fall under the umbrella of proof. We want students to be able to develop their oral and written communication, to develop their interpersonal skills. They, we want them to be able to research and organize, but also be creative. And I think sometimes in mathematics we forget about the creativity and the fun and the innovation of, of our discipline area. So proof is one way to really help our students be creative in their thinking. Now I'm so pleased to actually show you um, some of the beautiful resources that uh, a group of authors have put together and I'm going to talk specifically about some uh, investigations from the new Oxford IB Diploma Maths uh, books. So you can see that we've decided to separate the books out into the four courses and each of these books and chapters contain different investigations that lead to specific conceptual understandings. Now earlier I actually said we do not share content specific conceptual understandings with students. So those statements are actually printed and included in the teacher's guide. You will not find specific conceptual understandings in the student resources. But the student resources will include factual and conceptual questions to help draw out those very important conceptual understandings. And all of the investigations adopt this inductive teaching approach which really encourages students to generalize for themselves. Now I'd love to show you an example of an investigation from one of the books. Uh, but before I do that, I want to tell you a little story. So I, I was teaching for 27 years in the classroom. I just retired and left the classroom. Um, and once I had a year nine class join me, and I said to the year nine class, we were just about to start a whole section on trigonometry. And I said to the class, have you learnt about similar right angle triangles and ratios of the corresponding sides? And the student said, I have no idea what you're talking about. 
And then as soon as I said Sakotoa, they got their calculator up and they went, oh yeah, formulas on a calculator. And they had no understanding of what those ratios uh, were. So here is an investigation to really help students understand ratios in similar right angle triangles. So you can see that we start off with a few similar right angle triangles at the top with particular measurements. And we're actually asking our students to find different ratios such as opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, and opposite over adjacent. Notice how we don't even mention those words of sine, cos, and tan, or Sokotoa, because we want to emphasize the understanding of the corresponding ratios in similar right angle triangles first. And then you'll see that there are some examples of factual questions and conceptual questions to really draw out the understandings from students. So please, get, we really value your feedback. Please give us some feedback. Here is the QR code. Um, we really look forward to hearing any feedback that you have on the talk today. Please feel free also to contact me at uh, any time, Jennifer Waffle at Jennifer Waffle. And thank you so much for listening. Bye.